Hello friends, happy Galentine's Day. It is February 13th, right? Yes. Um, and this is a bizarre version of drive through tarot because as you can see, I'm not in a drive through I'm in a parking lot. But I went through a drive through and got a flat white from the great, great, great green goddess, but there wasn't a line. Um, so <laughs> it's Sunday morning, it is quarter to 10. Um, I teach tarot school at noon, but I thought, you know, I had some errands to run. It's supposed to snow this afternoon. I need some fabric for a few tarot wraps. So I thought I'll just go to Joanne's first thing. So, <laughs> so I, I left my house about an hour before Joanne's open thinking, you know, there would be a line at Starbucks, blah, 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 blah. I went to the bank. I went to Starbucks. I drove across town and it is still 15 minutes before Joanne open, Joanne's opens. So I thought it's a great time to do a drive through slash parking lot tarot. Today I'm using tarot vintage. Um, I don't remember if it was Luna or Shannon from the tarot diagnosis that um, I was talking to and um, just about how this version of the Rider Waite Smith does not assault my eyes. I have had, I've been reading tarot for five, six years at this point, and I've never found a Rider Waite Smith that I like, that actually that I, that doesn't like insult my vision. And once I got tarot vintage, um, I've been kind of surprised. I don't think it's funny that I've three or two of the nights already. Um, I've been really surprised hmm, at how often I've reached for this deck. Um, once I finish all of my tarot school material, I'm going to go, um, I've flipped to so many majors. I'm going to go deeply through this deck with, um, with a symbolism study. But anyway, um, Let's do a little bit of a Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day reading um, in the realm of how to care for ourselves on a day that, um, that we most often think about caring for others. So putting ourselves first and, and with, that, with that intentional vagueness, that whatever comes up is what comes up. Um, I believe that my readings are um, not predictive. Um, at least not my group readings. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is because this is a, um, a reflective practice, not a predictive practice, that there is always room for um, receiving the messages at any time that it is more about how we shift our thoughts with the cards than um this is a message that has to be heard today right i think that this um i love thinking about <laughs> a tarot practice in the same way that we would a meditation practice or a yoga practice we can listen to something that was previously recorded um, to get the same sort of insight and reflection um, that we could have at the time it was recorded. So, if I check my watch, because I really want to be in when they open, because I got stuff to do today. I'm going to do one last shuffle. And then let's see what the cards want us to consider today. <laughs> so we've got the Ace of Wands. So the Ace of Wands is that moment of the spark of our, um, of a new idea, a new concept, a new epiphany around how we experience the world and what is out there in the world for us. So I think about the Ace of Wands <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be just totally transparent and the way that the Ace of Wands is showing up for me today. Um, in my travels, my, um, <laughs> my errands this morning, I've been listening to the, um, the most recent podcast. It's a replay um, of On Being with Krista Tippett where she talks to John O'Donohue. And um, it is just like 
blowing my mind. Um, his way of speaking and his concept around time is really giving me this new, this, this new rekindled um, spark, this rekindled curiosity of how I want to take um, my sense of presence and my sense of awareness into the world. So um, what I love about the Ace of Wands, I think it's this, this, it, this, this invitation to really pay attention to the magic that's around us, to what we're watching, what we're reading, what we're listening to, the conversations we're having with people, what we're writing in our journal, really looking at those things and finding a new spark and a new zest for life in that. Whether that is um, being curious about a hobby, but thinking, I don't have time for that, but committing to it. Um, looking at the little, the sparks that come and not just letting them pass by, not minimizing them. It's got hot in my car. Um, but really acknowledging that what lands with us and sparks us does so for a reason. I almost just lost all of the cards into the floorboard. Um, I'm gonna put them in the box, hold on. <laughs> That's much more stable. So looking at what attracts our energy and recognizing the joy that is available to us if we follow through with that spark. So um, we're gonna let the, le the next card then reflect what could stand in our way of following the spark. And we had the five of cups. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take a very clear, a very, <laughs> my absolute intuitive hit with this is, look, Chrissy, you've done this before. You've bought all of the books on X, Y, and Z. You've done all of these things and you've done nothing with them. <laughs> so when I still have all of these supplies over here to, of past sparks, how can I justify following today's spark? That's a really good question. If I have gone all in on other sparks that haven't been the thing, because I don't know about you, maybe, maybe it's the Scorpio in me, maybe it is the collector in me, but I don't go little. When I decide I'm doing something, whether that is, um, I check my, my watch, whether that is a hobby um, or I'm gonna learn something, I don't order one book, I order five. So I see, I really see the five of cups here as, as this, this loss of hope, right? Like I followed the spark before, nothing happened with it. I thought this was the thing and now I just feel extra guilty because I have this bag or this box in my closet of things that aren't getting used. So we feel the spark. What discourages us from following through with that spark is our past of not following through with the spark. So then let's look at something, some encouragement. No, no, no. I'm actually gonna shuffle these cards again real quick. Um, So bringing up this acknowledgement of what we haven't followed through with. My next question then is how, how can we find a sense of clarity? And we have death. So death is not, <laughs> death is not this big scary card of, um, of actual death. It's the, it's this representation of moving from where we were to where we are from, it's, it's the real closing of a cycle and being able to say goodbye to the things that don't fit so we can step more, um, more fully into what is coming next. So <laughs> when I see the death card with this specific question, like, but what about, I want to follow through with this next spark, but what about all of these things that I haven't followed through with before? When I see the death card here, I think get rid of them. 
the things that are holding you back and this feels super Marie Kondo, right? But the things that, that are preventing you from moving forward because you didn't work with them in the first place, sorry, alert. How can you move forward? How can you get rid of them? So is that, um, is that asking who in your social circle wants all of your yarn? Is that taking um, books that you aren't reading to half price books? Is that um, clearing the slate, removing from your awareness, from your actual, um, your actual house, your surroundings, removing the things, bringing death and new space to the things that um, that hold shame for not follow through. And I love, I love this concept of creating space for these things. Um, saying goodbye to them, letting them um, have new life somewhere else. I think this is why the decluttering, rehoming um, tarot videos are so interesting because we get to witness that process of saying, either you served a purpose for me and now it's time for you to serve a purpose for someone else. Or um, I just didn't bond with you the way I thought I was going to. And being able to acknowledge that and send things on their way is such a beautiful death process. So we have following the spark of curiosity um, and allowing that to be, to, to change you and to, to bring joy and life and energy to your life. Um, the complication within that is the Five of Cups. So this, this attachment to the things that weren't working, but we still kind of hold on to them. How we move on from that energy is the Death card, letting them go so that they can create new life for other people, with other people, and create that own space, that space for us to welcome something else. And finally, for guidance, we have the Knight of Wands. So the Knight of Wands to me is very similar energy to the Ace of Wands. Brings that awareness of the impact of following um, the Ace of Wands. Where the Ace of Wands can be that, um, just that that spark, that, that sense of curiosity that's here and then it's gone. The Knight of Wands shows us the impact that, um, that following this action, this spark, can have. It allows us to be curious, what if I really bring this in? What if I really integrate this? What if I allow this to change me, to be a part of me? Again, whether that is, um, I think about a journaling practice and how we can start it with this curiosity of like, I don't know what this is gonna be, um, whether it's a page or two or 10 minutes, or however you wanna see it each day. Like being, being curious without putting a lot of weight on the potential outcome of that practice. Um, following this, this ace, this spark, this idea of the wand, and then really welcoming the change, the shifts, the impact that it can have on you and being willing to follow that, even though you don't know exactly where it's going. So friends, we'll draw one final card for guidance, conclusion. <laughs> and we have the Eight of Swords. So the Eight of Swords is this, this representation of when we feel trapped, but we're not. The, um, the Tarot of Mystical Moments represents this card as a character um, with wings in a birdcage and the birdcage is open, but she's still stay staying tucked closely and, um, and isn't unfurling in any way. And the Eight of Cups is this, this, this reminder that we're not as trapped as we think we are, that the way out is right there, that we're making things too hard that we have all that when it comes to following this spark this this energy this this curiosity this
this spark that can propel us into something different energetically or spiritually. That we can make this too hard. That we can, that we can get caught up in ordering the perfect pen and the perfect journal and maybe even a leather cover. And I need some washi tape. Instead of just getting an 80 cent, are they still 80 cents? An 80 cent wire bound notebook um, and, uh, you know, and a free pen that you picked up at the bank. I realized that those two things just really aged me, right? An 80 cent notebook and a bank pen, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Where are we making things too hard? Where are we getting in our own way? Where are we not seeing just the, the wide open opportunity before us and instead getting stuck in the details? I talk a lot about how, what I believe, the purpose of therapy and also the purpose of tarot, to be completely honest, is to be able to zoom out, to take a step to the left, a step to the right, maybe look at the look at our situation from overhead to see things from a different vantage point. And I think this is both the invitation and what is holding us back. Um, when we when we follow that spark, that newness, that this maybe and maybe not brand new. This could be a re-sparking of something that you have in the closet, right? Um, when we experience this this flicker of oh, this could change things that thing could be what could bring us to a different perspective. But we have to get out of our own way. Well, friends, I did it. It is, it is after 10 o'clock. I can now buy fabric to make a wrap for my beloved Tarot Vintage. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I will see you on Wednesday with a tour of my soul decks of the decks that um that i am using in like my deep practices and um i think the tag is like pieces of my soul but i talk about how i use different decks in different ways so have a lovely week and i'll see you in a few days